that sounds great. Woo! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, hello. Thank you for that wonderful welcome. And welcome to uh, the 30th annual Bayview Wadden Library Poetry Recital. Woo! My name is Linda Brooks Burden. I'm the manager here at the library. And um, I haven't been here for all those 30 years. I've been here for about 12 of those years. And I'm about to introduce you the person who has led this poetry recital for the last 30 years. He's um, our neighborhood activist, community activist here in the Bayview Wadden. Uh, neighborhood and well-known poet in his own right. Please help me welcome Larry Ware. <laughs> Good evening and uh, thank you and welcome to our 30th anniversary. It is indeed a uh, pleasure and thank you all for coming and uh, uh, Thank Linda, and let's give Linda and her staff a wonderful round of applause for the wonderful work they're doing here. And uh, I tell you, I, I had a vision and a dream uh, 30 years ago, and I would gather poets and writers here, and we'd meet in a community room, and uh, I said, hey, let's get together and let's just start giving a poetry recital. So here we are 30 years later, and um, as customary, uh, like to pay tribute to uh, uh, some of our angels and fallen soldiers. Uh, uh, I want to mention three uh, wonderful ladies in uh, particular, uh, Miss uh, Charlie Mae Lentz, uh, she just recently passed away. Uh, our families go back 50 years. And um, her brother is the one who suggested that uh, Pastor Medeiros be pastor of uh, Double Rock Baptist Church and uh, a really wonderful lady. And another lady, um, uh, Lily Mitchell, uh, has been a friend of the family over 50 years. One of my mother's best, pr best friends, uh, she uh, passed away. And uh, another really wonderful lady, been knowing me since I was a little kid. And uh, I uh, just heard some news. Uh, Miss Dorothy uh, Turner Everett of Everton Jones, she just passed away. And her funeral will be tomorrow. And really wonderful lady like I worked for them from uh, 77 to 89. I was their public relations man. And um, she, uh, we hit it off right from the bat. She said, uh, Larry, I need you to help me uh, help me out at this restaurant. So I said, you got it, Miss Everett. Uh, she said, uh, when can you start? I didn't start maybe in a couple of days. She said, I need you right now. So I've been a public relations man for uh, 12 years. and. Um, uh, let's say a prayer for these uh, three wonderful ladies and also uh, the many uh, uh, people who are not here today to celebrate this event with us. We'd like to have them in our prayers and uh, uh, pray for the sick and shut in. And uh, again, thank you for coming and uh, welcome to our 30th annual poetry celebration. And I'd like to start off the program with a uh, poem entitled uh, Write It Out All the Way to the Top. Inner self-respect became the light of my soul and a way of life, and my heart became entrusted with the virtues of dignity and pride, and my outer appearance was just an inner reflection of self-esteem, self-love, respect, and understanding. As I stood alone at the top of my world, and as I became the builder, engineer, and architect of my own destination, I started to write it all out, all the way to the top. And as I became totally immersed in the stream of life, I started to write it all out, all the way to the top. And as the eyes of truth got brighter, self-love surfaced and warm horizons turned golden as timeless wisdom dazzled in a wave of beauty and splendor. And as the gray clouds filled with rain get kissed by the lovely sunshine, the skies turned lovely blue. Then I knew that I could see forever and ever. Now I'm in harmony with myself as the spirits in a temple of wisdom touched my heart and filled my soul and I became enriched with the many qualities of life. That which appears, disappear, then reappear. Seek the plateau of the horizon for your field of vision is clear. And when those creative, productive, and constructive thoughts begin to fill your minds, Go for it, because that one solid moment could strike any minute now. I desire to blow my own horn in the band of glory as heroes march across the sky. 
because I've seen the light of many dawns. I do not lust for showers of unworthy self-glory, for I will reach for the fire that would bring me rain and give my heart for the cause now because we have a chance for righteousness and be the dream of the dreamers. So write your way out, write your way up, write your way over, write your way to the top and don't stop. Then light up and write it all out, all the way to the top. Fulfilling are the virtues of emotional poise, composure, and self-control. So exert the leadership qualities, lead the way to the top, and right on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I would like to uh, introduce our uh, next poet here, uh, this uh, young man, extraordinary uh, uh, gentleman, a uh, brilliant poet, and uh, uh, you're going to hear a lot of things about this brother here. Let's uh, give a rousing, um, and he also hosts this poetry slam, just celebrated his second anniversary, so let's give a... Okay, all right. Well, uh, pause for the cause here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Well, we'll go to the next port and come back to Brother Jesse. Um, excuse me a moment. Um, our next poet will be. Uh, Brother uh, Leonard Brackets. Let's give Brother Leonard a great round of applause. Another outstanding gentleman here in the Bay Area. Welcome to the show there, brother. Thank you very much. All right. I'd like to, first of all, commend the branch library and its staff and all associated uh, individuals who have made this evening possible. And uh, I'd like to also um, offer a small little part of my collection of thoughts. They're not specifically set out in a poetic format, of course, but um, it's more of a philosophical endeavor. And uh, I'd like to uh, read on freedom. Okay, just a second. The topic of my choice this evening is based on freedom. The right to freedom does not negate the required accountability that is exercised, that the exercise of that freedom demands. I would like to read that one again because I kind of goofed up. The right to freedom does not negate the required accountability that the exercise of that freedom demands. True freedom does not imply being free to be dumb. Being free to be dumb or to do dumb things has consequences to one's self or others. Freedom is not free, of course. Freedom has a price, and the price of freedom is accountability. Freedom is relative, that is, a personal perception. A person may be free from the shackles of physical chain and ball on their body, but may not necessarily be free from metaphorical chains and ball of circumstances on their body. He who is conquered by others and chooses to remain conquered may not get the chance to taste the freedom of victory. Freedom is a God-given virtue, and whatever God has bestowed, man should not have to restore. And the last thought, Freedom is innate to mankind, but history is littered with attempts by man to enslave others of his kind. Thank you for your time. Well, 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 look who's here. 
What's your name, young lady? Precious Aware. Who is it? Who is your daddy? You are. <laughs> you my little princess. Daddy love you. That's my daughter, Princess Precious here. That's what she needs. Precious got Precious gonna do something uh, special a uh, little bit later there. And uh Good to see you, baby. Daddy love you. I have a seat there and I'm gonna call you up on how you do. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. That's my baby. She was a little tiny baby. Uh, uh, the first year she was kept grabbing the microphone. <laughs> and now, a son and daughter, they write poetry. Yeah, so. Uh, our next uh, poet, uh, uh, this young man is a brilliant poet and a, a gifted orator. And uh, he was reciting uh, poetry here about 10 years, I guess. Uh, nine, yeah. Yeah, so he. Uh, 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 this this young man is brilliant, and you're going to hear a lot of things from him. So let's give uh, Brother Jesse Wiley a great round of applause. Could have gotten a, a better introduction, something like, you know, here comes the greatest poet of all time, something like that. <laughs> you, can do that you can do that later on. The next one. So I'm only gonna do one. Um, you said the greatest poet of all time? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, he's after me, so it's all good. So I just have one, and uh. Oh, uh huh. So, I mean, when I first started reading here, like all my stuff had like, like a lot of curse words and whatnot. It was ridiculous. I was such a horrible poet for like eight years, and I finally got my my act together a couple years ago. Okay. So, okay. This is my one poem. It's called "A Reading Rainbow." Let's go somewhere where we're aware of where somewhere over the rainbow is where the people can fly. And their eyes are watching God intently as he traipses triumphantly across the sky. And if Bill Street could talk, it would wonder aloud why the cage bird sings and why all God's children wear traveling shoes and not a halo, a robe, and silvery golden wings. Our ruby slippers are wingtips to wish away from one continent to another country in only a wink. Discover the whole earth in only a week. The souls of black folk no longer lonely and weak. Style so tony and cheek. Humor so tongue and cheek. Where laughter always seems to come so cheap in all shapes, sizes, and hues. So even when the Negro speaks of rivers, hilarity ensues, and faces go from white to rouge, black to soft blues, to the color purple in a circle of seconds. To be or not to be is not the question. See, I think, therefore I am, and damn if it hasn't given my existence arc and pull, unlike any idea man can ever hope to pull from his meager pool of understanding. Let's go somewhere where we are unaware how demanding being can be. Black boy and colored girls who've considered suicide when the rainbow ain't enough, so only the stuff of legend will open their eyes so they can see and set them free. Just let them be. Give them room so they can breathe, education so they can read that the end of the primitive is close and all the ghosts of Mississippi will holler if you let them go or forget they were or forget their work. So go tell it on the mountain so we'll never forget their worth, the learning tree as important as the poplar, hopefully as popular. And 
Even without an ocular over my third eye, I still realize, still I rise in the morning, blessed to be alive. No more the invisible man. Now everyone can see I'm no individual man. Instead, a patchwork of indivisible man. Catch me if you can in my dirigible man. Descendant of the original man. Let's go somewhere where wherever we can, we wear the roots of our original land. All over our feet, all over our hands. Wherever we go, folks are waiting to exhale in advance as we arrive, their collective size or enough to make the known world expand in size. And we find kindred we never knew and renew broken family ties that bind us together and remind us forever is a chronicle of a death foretold that most of us won't live to die naturally at a hundred some odd years old, surrounded by a village of people we help nurture and mold into number and kite runners and a number of other roles. Some rolled into one to become as beloved as a native son come back to watch the sun bury itself in the horizon and resurrect the next morning when the Most High awakens and turns the lights on. His eyes are on the sparrow and he always walks the road less traveled. He is every rhythm, every riddle unraveled, an arrow that pierces your heart and injects purpose straight into your bone marrow. So tomorrow you can dismantle each wall that has ever caused you sorrow brick by brick like the women of Bruce the Place or the man in Giovanni's room or the specter of slavery in Uncle Tom's cabin where the miseducation of the Negro was given new life, yet some say it never happened, like African and Jewish Holocaust, like Mein Kampf was never written, millions of Jewish men, women, and children shot or gassed to death were just hidden. Matter of fact, they are still in hiding. A tree never grew in Brooklyn. The ozone layer is fine, war is right, and hip hop is as dead as disco. So let's go. Somewhere where we are aware of where somewhere over the rainbow is where the people can fly. And are so fly, the sky isn't enough anymore. And when you die, there's even more. And this life is only a wrinkle in time, a precursor of what's to come. There's so much else to explore. This way, follow me. Let's give Brother Jess another great round of applause there. Some really great work there. Our next uh, poet is going to be uh, Darcel Jones. Um, she's the children librarian and is doing a wonderful job here and a, a wonderful poet. Let's give uh, Darcel a great round of applause. Kisses, long, passionate kisses, toe-curling kisses, tongue-whirling kisses, the promise, fulfillment of unexplored desires, kisses. Oh yeah, I miss those kisses. I miss kisses, soft, slippery kisses, sliding down my neck and shoulder kisses, gravity obeying kisses. Oh please, a little further down kisses. I dream of those kisses. I miss kisses, hard demanding kisses, teeth crashing kisses, heart pounding kisses, ear ringing kisses, head spinning kisses, knee buckling kisses. His weight pins my ass against the wall kisses, my grasping his neck for dear life kisses, his hard dick presses against my belly kisses, his fingers tangled in my hair kisses, stopping to breathe is a crime kisses. God damn, I miss those kisses. When you woo woo woo, that was beautiful. That that. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, uh, hey, Walt, call the fire department. <laughs> that was nice. 
Let's give Darcy another great round of applause. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, um, I'm going to uh, do one poem and then I'm going to introduce our next poet. Uh, this is very new. I wrote this uh, about two weeks ago and uh, it's entitled, We Fell in Love in the Rain. The tenderness in your eyes, the warmness of your smile, the sweetness of your love tells me you're looking at my heart. Baby, can't you see how my eyes just adore you? Can't you see my smile kissing you back? Now it's cloudy. It's raining. Now there's tears of joy are waiting to fall. Then in a warm and loving way, our hearts tenderly touched. Then we got caught in a love storm. We kissed the kiss of love as our hearts danced in the rain. That is how we fell in love in the rain. Oh, my love, what a joy. The thought of you filling my heart with your love, your tender love. Oh, the love that my heart has needed for so long, so very long. Then you looked at me with those beautiful loving eyes and said, my love, I want to be with you. Then your arm said, I want to hold you. Hey, girl, why don't you try to squeeze me a little tight? Real tight. Let's make it a love night. You know, you know what I'm talking about. We looked deep into each other's eyes as we began to fall deeper and deeper in love. Then we shared another I love you kiss in the rain. Now two hearts have become one, one love in the rain. Yes, I said in the rain. Now I give you my heart. I'll shelter you from the storm and showers to come. Then we danced and romanced in the rain as our hearts showered together in the tears of joy. We kissed the kiss of love as our hearts danced in the rain. Then our hearts exploded into a golden burst of sunlight. Love is the liquid sunshine for my beautiful flower. You're my lady love, the sweet love of my heart. And that is how we fell in love in the rain. <laughs> okay, thank you. Our next poet is going to be uh, Janice uh, Reeves. So let's give uh, Janice a great round of applause for the first time. Good evening, welcome to the show. Uh, this poem that I'm about to do, um, I wrote it a while ago, and I just wanted to do it tonight, so it's called Of Me. Why do you hate me? Can't you see that we are of one, that we're all in the image of me, of one DNA seed, not different species? Your father, mother, Adam and Eve, of the African soil, Euphrates, from Ethiopia, Iraqis. Skin dark brown, hair nappy, because I'm dominant, you see. Making all mankind, because all come from me. Every color you can see, brown, red, yellow, even white is of me. Albino, you see, because you are of me. You've claimed everything of me, doing your best to eliminate me, but not accepting the fact that you are of me. I made all men equal and free to love one another and to glorify in me. 
but evil has corrupted your mind, making you think, sitting on your throne, that you're somebody. Can't you see that you're being deceived, used, and abused until there's no more use for you? The truth is written for all to see if you just take the time to get to know the real me. But after all you've done against me, I still can't hate thee because you are of me. You will go on hating me. You hated my son Jesus just like me because of the devil's hatred against me. I must get over that this world will never accept me until the day Jesus comes again to set all those who believe in me free. Thank you. That was a beautiful poem. Let's give her another great round of applause. I want to share you uh, something that's, that I treasure deep in my heart. This is a treasure. It was written for me uh, by uh, someone that's right here to me. Uh, see this little picture? There's a poem. Uh, somebody wrote this for me, and she's going to come up and do it. My daughter, Precious. I hear drops of puddles when I step in puddles. I feel wet on my pants. I see dark clouds when I look up. I smell flowers and trees. They smell like sugar. I taste the rain and the sprinkles of the rain. I think the flying, but I really can't fly. I see so happy because it rains. All right, there, big girl. Thank you, baby. My baby was, was eight years, seven years, seven. That's yeah, seven. Let's give her another <laughs> Our next poet, uh, this is her first time. And let's give her a great round of applause. Um, Tina Derricks. Uh, Tina, this is her first time. And welcome. All right. This is not my first time up here. <laughs> no. no, this is my first time reading at this one, but I was, oh, oh, I was <laughs> with Jesse. I'm kind of torn between which one of these I wanted to do, and I wanted to know if it was okay if I could read two of them. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna start off with a nice one first. <laughs> and I'm always nervous, as you know. <laughs> so I have a bit of a flu, so forgive the voice. <sighs> this first one is called His Gift. Though I didn't know the plan, I dare not challenge his command. I simply knelt and wept and gave to him my life which he did save. My soul lamented doubt and mind, for he who seeks so shall he find. And when he spoke this, then I knew his love was real like dreams come true. His plan was simple, I didn't know that to live anew I must let go of doubt and fear, of shame and lies of tears, regrets, unwholesome ties, of anger's pain that made me sad. My life and all was his to have, to heal, to love without condition, gave me hope in my admissions. To him I stood, and he alone would judge my life and cast the stone. I needn't worry, man is man. And so I took my father's hand, and to the past I bid farewell, and to the shame I knew so well, and to the anger set in stone, and to the lies I told so long, 
and to the pain that nearly killed, my spirit rose, I bid his will. My God has given unto me the gift of life eternally, the gift of joy and hope and love, the gift of wisdom from above. A gift as such cannot be stored, cannot be questioned or ignored, will not be silent, won't be still, cannot be told it's no big deal cannot be scorned or marred with shame, too great the power of his name. I knew his will, it shall be done, and so I share his gift with everyone. That one I wrote up when I was, I was lost and then I was found and then I was like, oh, okay, cool. I know what it is now, I know what it's about. This second one, I was kind of nervous about it, <laughs> but the spirit was on me to write it. And so I'm just gonna read it to you all. It's called, I Wish. Sometimes I wish I could get inside my people, get inside their hearts and beyond their thoughts, cause they ain't thinking or so it seems. They've lost touch with what it means to have dreams and be free. And you know what really bothers me? My people, they don't even see. The pain, the shame, the loss of young life. My baby's mama, but never my wife. Always my nigga, but never my friend. Sacrificing who they are just for the sake of fitting in. Trying too hard to get over instead of trying to get in. The doors of opportunity that exist within our own communities to reach out and beyond those ghetto chains and so-called bling and fly-by-night fame. Our children, they don't even know the true game. When nigger was used to cause us pain, to keep us down, replace our true African names. And the truth is, with heavy losses, we overcame that backward time when slavery reigned. But the battle for our survival still rages on, cause we've come full circle and our failures to move on, returning to that ugly place our ancestors fought so damn hard to erase. We're wiping ourselves out and at the hands of our own race. So call it what you want to, man. It's genocide, it's by our own hands. And this shit's got little to do with the man who just sits back with folded hands and laughs while we fulfill the master plan. The clan, well hell, we're giving him a hand by hanging ourselves with our own nooses, with no real plan and lame excuses, wanting to get yours by trying to take mine and pulling us all down by wasting precious time with robbing and killing and towing the line of that false ghetto fabulous bling state of mind. I'm confused, fed up, and truly downhearted to see us go back to where it all started a terrible waste should be called a disgrace and be mad if you want, but these facts must be faced. And damn it to hell if I seem out of place, but it's about time we took back our true race. Oh, how I wish I could get inside my people and let them know that I've been there too. So easy it was for me to place the blame, the lies I told, just a part of my game, so I wouldn't have to grow up or wake the hell up or take out the rags of responsibility and wipe my own butt. So easy it was to lay flat on my back in the hopes that another would pick up the slack and speak on my behalf just because I was black. But I learned that ain't life, not the way it should be. My life is my own, so the truth be on me. And yeah, it wasn't easy to get off my lame ass and build on my future by understanding my past, not live in the past, but live for today. This and so much more I wish I could say to my people who deal with loss and with pain, to my brothers who think that my nigga's their name, to my sisters who want more but can't see the way, to my people whose dreams seem too far away. Well, I'm here to tell y'all it ain't over yet. We need to rethink, keep our own selves in check. We are worth all the love that God has to give because we're worth so much more than that bullshit we live. My people, I say this because I am you because you are me and I love you, I do. Let's work together by keeping it real because behind every way there's I can and I will. We can if we choose to, we fail if we don't. Take a look at the choices we will or we won't. I want us to live how God meant us to be, but that calls for so much more than one wish from one me.
Let's give this sister another great round of applause. That was beautiful. <clears throat> You know, uh, 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 beautiful, yeah. Uh, uh, Larry, Larry Jr. couldn't attend tonight. He's uh, in a camp there. They uh, were at Point Reyes on a school expedition there. So when you get back, call him Professor Ware. But uh, he uh, uh, wanted to do some poetry, but uh, since uh, he called me Little Spike, I say, well, if I'm Little Spike, who are you? He say, he big Spike, so I'm little Spike, but I just wanted to share with you uh, uh, some of his work since he's not here. Um, this was precious, just to show you, we need to encourage our young people. There's so many brilliant artists and, and wordsmiths in this community and around the, the city and the Bay Area. We need to promote artwork and literacy, and this, my little princess, she uh, did this for Father's Day, and uh, you see, uh, this guy here, oh, that's me and that's Precious, said, um, number one dad, of all the dads, I am glad that I confess you're the best. I love you. Happy Father's Day for my little princess. This, from, this is from Larry Jr. And uh, <laughs> dear dad, happy Father's Day. You are special. I love you, daddy. Here's another one from Junior, his artwork. I love you, uh, happy Father's Day. I love you, Dad. Love you too. And this is just one of many. Precious and Junior, they'd be on the honor roll. Here you chip off the old block, uh, the perfect score and the spelling, so they, uh, they uh, uh, get it on us. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you. Um, I show their artwork to uh, take a moment to uh, speak of another brilliant uh, person in this community, another brilliant artist, and I've been knowing this young man a long time. And um, you see all this wonderful artwork here. Just look at this extraordinary, this is world-class artwork. And um, I want to introduce the, the person who did all this artwork. Uh, come up with it. My name is William Scott, but the Baby Hunting Spoon will be redevelopment in the 2010 because the uh, Baby Hunting Spoon will be replaced as Disney World, as Disney World, as a uh, Gospel Disney World because we need a piece. Because uh, cause, uh, Baby Hunting Spoon needs to be changed because uh, it needs to be uh, replaced as Disney World, as a Gospel Town. A peaceful, cause uh, the gospel town is good for people to build people's good lives. So, well, uh, Baby Hines Point will become new as Disney Gospel Town will become Hollywood. Will become a new neighborhoods into Hollywood. Cause uh, see a Disney oh. Because uh, the Disney World will be in uh, Baby Hines Point, changing to Hollywood, will be uh, superstars, movie stars will be in the Baby Hines Point of the new neighborhoods. Because uh, Price Fresco will be, uh, will be re replaced as a new San Francisco into a gospel Hollywood town, will be take down all those original cityscapes to take down the penthouses so so, re, so they can replace the new condos, high rises, balconies, high rises into uh, cityscapes uh, for a good people and Hollywood stars will be living in the bay, will be living in the city of uh, Praise Frisco because uh, we need the peace because uh, but uh, Disney, uh, Seattle's areas, a detailed areas of the 
that's going to be in 2010 because re construction will be on uh, Christmas Eve because uh, uh, construction will be coming to the Baby Hearns Point to do construction in uh, 2010. We'll be doing because uh, people will be moving out of Baby Hearns Point on Christmas Eve. On uh, New Year's Day, construction will begin in Baby Hearns Point to demolish the the did to remodel to, to be the malls of the Baby Hines Point liquor stores will be placed the liquor stores into uh, hotels and high rises. Cause uh, cause we gotta move people out of Baby Hines Point to replace the Disney Wood into a new neighborhoods. So people will be building people's life to take to uh, cancel the liquor stores. So you want it won't have no more gangs, no more violence, no more guns, cause uh, Baby Hines Point will become a new neighborhood in this year in t 2007 in, de in uh, December. Okay. Let's give William a great round of applause. I I just wanted to come up and and really point out you know, how gifted William really is. He goes to a, um, a school over in Oakland called Creative Growth, which is a school for, for challenged adults who are artistic, and he's been doing that this for years. And he has a lot in his head going on, and it's all about his neighborhood, and architecture is his thing, and you can see the detail in his work. You, got, you need to really come up and see it after the poetry. And you might even recognize some, some um, streets, you know, some areas here that are in and around Baby Hunter's Point that he has drawn, drawn you know, meticulously to the detailed point. Of course, he would like to have fantasy. There's a little fantasy involved here, but that's, that's the way he would like to see Baby Hunter's Point. And so I just wanted to point out that he is definitely a gifted artist, and he has actually shown in many places, including New York City. Um, and we hadn't done anything here at the library for him, so we're putting up his work for the first time and hope to do more in the future, so. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Let's give this gentleman another great round of applause. I don't know. <laughs> William, we, we appreciate your artistic integrity. We appreciate. Our next poet is going to be a uh, first time. Uh, let's uh, greet uh, Joshua Smallwood. This next one is called Races. <clears throat> this next one is called Races. <clears throat> People always ask me, what are you? What am I? Does it matter? I'm human, just like you. Does a different race make me a Martian? Would it make me cooler? Would it make me a loser? Why do we look at people as a race, not as an individual? What if I told you, would it what if I told you? Would it change your view of me? Would I be your friend? Would I be your enemy? People always ask me, what are you? And my answer is always, I am unique. A comment that Josh is our, our pre, a president of Speak Up. That's our, our uh, teen advisory council. So, you know, go Josh. He just started our book club, too. I want to introduce our next uh, poet. Uh, uh, she's participated before. Uh, <laughs> Kathleen, let's give Kathleen a great round of applause. It's nice to be loved, yeah. Um, 
I, um, I was hoping to dance a poem for you tonight, uh, but, 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 um, but I'll have to save that one for like another time. Um, um, I've, been, I've been told by our library assistant that this is strictly poetry, so if I'm like, if I say the poem and then dance it, that would be kind of against the rules, so, you know, so, so I, so, so I, <laughs> So I brought, I brought another poem um, that I wrote. Um, basically, like Precious, I guess, you know, poetry is kind of contagious. And when you, when you get exposed to it a lot, I think sometimes the spirit just lands on you. And you know, you, you uh, can you hear me better now? Yeah? No, well, ne next time, I mean, I'm not prepared to dance now. Um, I wore my new leotard anyway, though. <laughs> um, but in any case, this, this poem was inspired because one time, Jesse uh, was writing a poem about, I guess, getting older as he approaches 30. And, um, <laughs> and, and um, you know, I mean, like all of his works, it was brilliant, but um, this is what fell on my heart because it was kind of a response, you know, to that. This poem is, um, is called 40-something. Hush, young thing, don't you cry. The real work comes way after 25. I can recall when I was your age, I know it's cliche, but just turn the page. I could tell tales of how dope and lust brought joy. I wonder whatever happened to that nice Jewish boy. Ah yes, time marched on, and we turned 30. He lived purely for his own pleasure, as did I, or at least until the high got dirty. I drifted through that fourth decade, wandering and wanting, loved and lost and loved again, until he came, sauntering, up to me, as cool as can be, changing my spirit forever, it still won't let me be. And oh, how I sought to be his wife, so steeped in self and unable to see that he was too busy fighting for his life until he lost it at 47. And I am 40 by this time, finally understanding how each year is a gift from the divine no longer fearing death, more concerned with walking in the light. I know through him that each year is a blessing and another chance to get it right. Now on the eve of turning 43, I lift my eyes and thank thee. I pray to be the best I can be, to leave behind a proud legacy of sharing, caring, and loving endlessly and embracing the truth to set me free. I pray for the strength to give tirelessly, to live one day at a time and accept that it ain't all about me. And it doesn't need to be, because the God I pray to promises eternal life and life more abundantly. <laughs> Let's give Captain another great round of applause. Our uh, next poet, uh, this uh, gentleman, another gifted gentleman here in the, the Bay Area, uh, Troy Alexander is going to come up and do some poetry. So let's give Troy a great round of applause. All right, there, uh, Troy. And welcome again there, brother. All right. <laughs> Come on. Nah. Hello, how y'all doing? Um, I ain't got nothing prepared, but uh, actually, I'm going with my heart on this one. I recently lost my little brother not too long ago on a 16th admission, so. I'm gonna dedicate this poem to him. I'm gonna come straight from the heart on this one. It's called uh, My Little Bruh. Little Bruh, what's up with you, man? I know I ain't talked to you in a long time, but uh, I just wanna tell you I love you. I know you already know that. Remember all the good times we had? 
back in the day, all the way up until now. I remember when I first seen you, it was real small, about five pounds, six ounces. I don't know how tall you was, though, but you was real small, though. And I loved you. When I first held you, you smiled. Yeah, I remember that. Remember when you got a little older, had your first girlfriend? You told mommy you was out with me when you was really at the park? <laughs> yeah, I had your back on that one. But it's all good. You still my little bruh. Let's rewind time forward. When we first had all these dreams about making it big in the music industry, yeah, I'm still pushing forward for it. Too bad you can't be here to see it, but I know you're upstairs looking down on me, helping me out do everything we got to do now. Remember that time? We was almost made it, man. We made it to Sacramento. We did them big old shows with Trina and Lil Scrappy. Those were some good times. Even when Pops died, when I came back home from my little vacation, we even stuck together. I still remember that hug. Even though we got into that little fight in the altercation afterwards, but I still loved you. It was funny afterwards because we clowned it and laughed about it on Father's Day when we both had our kids. So it's funny telling each other Happy Father's Day after we grown up for so long, talking about, yeah, we're going to be good daddies when we get older. I know you was because you had a whole lot of plans for your junior. I'm going to make sure it goes through because we're my junior too. Little bruh, I don't know how hard to say this, though. I just want to let you know I love you. All the family do. It's TNT for life, and I'll see you when I get there. Thank you. Let's give a great round of applause there. Uh, you know, I had uh, made a special request uh, uh, my little princess to do something for me, uh, and she's gonna come up and do a, one of my favorite songs, uh, uh, George Benson and Whitney Houston's uh, Now It's Precious, Unique Wears, The Greatest Love of All. So let's give my baby a standing ovation. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter Remind us how we used to be. Everybody searching for a hero. People need someone to look up to. I never found anyone who fulfilled that need. A lonely place to be. And so I learned to depend on me. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity because the greatest love of all is happening to me. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself 
is the greatest love of all. You are the sunshine of my life. That's why I'll always stay around you. That's my baby. That's, that's tears of joy there. Yeah. Okay, big girl. Thank you, big girl. <laughs> uh, that's my little princess. <laughs> Let's give my baby another great round. Um, Brother Jesse is going to come up and uh, uh, do another poem, so let's give Brother Jesse a big round of applause. Okay, first of all, I, I did not want to do this, I'm just doing it because of, uh, of you know, what's it called? Yeah, encore, yeah. So um, for this, I, I do expect each and every one of you to uh, to give Troy $5 for me uh, before you leave. Um, yeah, five bucks. If you can afford 10, do 10. There you go. So I'm gonna uh, uh, just do one, this, this one. Uh, um, I think this one has like one curse word in it, so excuse me the little ears. But this is called The Unauthorized Autobiography of Me. <laughs> so uh, some things are real, some things are not. I'll leave that to you guys to figure out which is what. Okay. I began writing poetry 29 years ago when I was only a ghost. A spook who spoke in tongues about smoke and lungs and cancer and bones, about being black brown and blue in broken homes, where sticks and stones hurt as much as being cursed, first born, second in command, a man on the verge, bound to his balls and his word, but not to his world, delivered from evil, left-wing radical just trying to do right by his people, with the power to see souls through peepholes in your pupils, been a poet since I was a pupa, born a pauper, papa was a rolling stone as well, an imposter, popular poker face poster boy, born in in Brooklyn, the eldest son of a seamstress and a sharecropper. Mama gave birth to me flying over Louisiana in a helicopter. An actor, one hella Oscars. My mirror has two faces, the invisible man and the phantom of the opera. A bayou bastard, run faster than forest, forage through a box of chocolates for a new life, like men looking through male order brides for a new wife. Black, the new white, nah. I just write like I'm light-skinned. About the recollection at morning, how at dawn the night ended, and the sky was reinvented, a color blue, something tremendous, electric and jumping, pumping, looked like the sky is falling. In the womb when I got my calling, it was the Lord on the other end talking, walking me through my lifetime, and gave me poetry as a lifeline. So I write rhyme like my life depends on it, gave me a binder full of paper, so I always feel safer when the pen's on it. Told me life was so full of shit, gotta put depends on it. But imagination was so great, you gotta put some fringe on it. And the fountain of youth is inside you, and it's okay for you to binge on it. That some laws are meant to be broken, so whatever restricts you, go ahead and infringe on it. Began writing poetry as a ritual to keep myself honest. My word is mine, I own it. Now the devil wanna buy my soul, so he can put a whole new demonic spin on it. Pile mountains of sin on it, but that will never happen. I'll even put ten on it. And whatever the case, I'll put the best men on it. A father, his son, and the Holy Ghost is back up. So whenever the line of communication with God is down, I work overtime to get the shit back up. And words taste so good, make you want to put fingers down your throat and bring them back up. Call me hopefully adventurous, vocally ambitious, lyrically dexterous, like a pastor at Ebenezer and Dexter Avenue Baptist. So much power and verve in his verse could hold a congregation, nay, a nation captive. Want to be called? 
called a man who was courageous, so advantageous with the truth, he was almost dangerous, ornery and cantankerous when he wanted to be, just wanted to be himself, so call him a poet if nothing else, and put him on your bookshelf alongside the likes of Angelou, Dunbar, Baldwin, and Walker, Miller, and other famous authors, a crucible or melting pot of people, past, present, future, and pretend. I'll even sweeten the pot with spices of life and kernels of truth, man can only hope he might someday comprehend. But it all looks so good, you can't wait for the feast to begin. So much food for thought, can't wait to dig in. So thank you, Lord, for this food we are about to eat. And may it strengthen our bones and our resolve to make it through each week. And keep us safe and sustained, humble and happy till next time we meet. In your name we pray, let's eat. I mean, amen. Thank you. Let's give Brother Jess another great round of applause. That's some great poetry. You, you know, uh, I tell you, uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you, you know, I was at the barbershop uh, a couple of months ago and I was talking with some older brothers, like it was five guys, it was like 80 in, in their 90s. And we was talking, we was talking about black history and different music and stuff like that. And I got to mention some names. I went to the vault and the crypt on it, and they say, wait a minute, Larry, now, we know you're sharp, but man, you're talking like you're older than us. <laughs> but it's just a blessing. Like, I was just fortunate and blessed to know some scholars and educated that hand, handed me off the baton, so uh, I'm running with them. And this is one example, 30th anniversary. Um, when I was a kid, I... Thank you. And, I, and you see, I handed off the baton and torches to my son and my daughter, and you see, they do it well. But uh, when I, uh, 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 when we were kids growing up, we knew how to have fun. And you know, like uh, me, like I'm a romanticist, as you can see. Uh, uh, we talk about the, the music, like we need to, one of the most wonderful things that happened was bringing back the jazz and the doo-wop singers. And um, I just want to, uh, before I go into the next poem, I just want to do a, a, a medley, a tribute to 80 of the doo-wop singers who appeared on the T.J. Lubinsky show have passed away. And among them, uh, some of my all-time favorites, like who remembers this song? As we stroll along together under stars twinkling high above, ooh, 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 so in love. Who remembers this one? Hey, girl, I tell you no lie. How am I supposed to exist without you? And who remembers this one? Shoo up, dooby doo, shoo up, dooby doo. Oh, the still of the night. Love you, darling. I love you so in the still of the night. Who remembers this? Baby, baby, you don't understand how much I love you, baby, and how much I want to be your only man. Baby, baby, baby. You don't have to go. Stay a little while longer, baby. I want to talk to you just a little more. I see the little tears in your eyes about to fall. Uh, another one here. You got me going in circles. Whoa, round and round I go. You got me going in circles. And then, closer I get to you, the more you make me see. By giving me all you got, your love has captured me over and over again. And then, I got to do my boys, the tall and the talented ones. Um, they did a, a song. I would build you a castle with a tower so high till it reaches the moon. 
I'll gather melodies from birdies that fly, fly, and compose you a tune. That's the Temptations from TCB. And uh, uh, Iceman Jerry Butler, got to give my boy the Iceman. For your precious love means more to me. That's my precious princess there. And then I uh, got to give my props to my, my buddy uh, uh, Curtis, the Midas, the Midas man. Prettier than all the world. Yes, and I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of being loved by you. And. Uh, It's been too hard living, and I'm afraid to die. A change. <laughs> you, okay. Well, you know, I left my home in Georgia, headed for the Frisco Bay. Now I'm sitting on the back of the bay. Uh, no, nah, uh, let me see. I'll do two more, and then I'll go into the poem and let you know this poem inspired this. Um, Many guys have come to you with the lie that wasn't true, and you're passing by, passing by. Now they're in the center ring, and their lies don't mean a thing. Why don't you let me try? That's the Delphonics. And um, one more. Um, uh, one of my uh, favorite songs. Uh, this was the five keys. They did it before Peaches and Herb. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Open your heart, open your heart. Whisper, I love you, I love you. Tell me you love me, you love me, you love me. Hold me tight, hold me tight. Don't say good night. We got time, lots of time. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to go into the poem that inspired that. When I was a kid, like I wanted to be a, a songwriter like Smokey Robinson and Holland Doze and Holland and Whitfield and Strong and uh, Gamble Huff and Bell at Phil International. And this uh, poem, uh, you know, we were coming up as kids, we used to stand in the doorways on the street corners and sang. And this poem is entitled, you, you'll catch on, it's entitled, The Splendor of Ghetto Suave. Initially, it was expressions of a sweet rapper, but I took it out and said, simply, sweet expressions, and you'll see why. Hey there, lovely lady. Warm, beautiful, sweet, tender, sexy, sincere, and all of them kind of nice things. You're even more to my heart. Lady love, I've searched all of my life, all of my life, looking for your kind of loving tenderness. It's beautiful and real. Oh, what is all the sweet love I feel? I see it in your eyes, and I feel your love looking through the windows of my world. And my lovely one, your smile is a warm and wonderful reflection of the love that's in your heart. And when I look into your eyes, I find myself saying, my goodness alive. Your lips sure look tasty. I'll bet they are very, very sweet. Lady, how are my chances? Very good, I hope. I'd be proud to be your celebrity lot any time, all the time, day and night. Then we can share the beauty and pleasure of evening walks hand in hand, strolling through the park, stop under a palm tree, dancing in the moonlight so we can kiss and hug and whisper sweet somethings as a warm and lovely summer breeze strums sweet melodies from the strings of tender summer leaves. Baby, you and me together is sweet melody magic as our hearts dance in celebration of the beautiful beginning of our love affair. Hearts touch on this lovely day. Sweet love smiles. Now let us listen to the sweet beat of the falling rain. Beautiful music to our ears. Sweet music to our hearts as we dance to love. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one sh Thank you. And I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do a short one. Now, just to show you how the inspiration just hits you, 
I wrote this one in three minutes and it won seven national awards and Essence Magazine selected in one of their issues. And it was raining one night, this was a few years ago. And um, I, I just, uh, you know, the melody just stayed in my head, fall in love, fall in love. And you know, the softness of the rain, you know, gently touching the flowers when they go from bud to bloom and fill every room. Uh, this one is entitled, Fall in Love. Should a warm smile in the rain turn your days into beautiful sunshine, fall in love. Should a loving kiss awaken you amidst a beautiful dream tenderly in the night, fall in love. Should a beautiful song of togetherness, a sweet song of love, caress and warmly embrace your heart, fall in love. Should you find the feeling real and that someone who is true from deep within their heart, fall in love. As the eyes of the heart look through the windows of the world, they can see that there's just so many beautiful things in life for people to do together. And should you find it wonderful, fall in love. Fall in love with me so we can fall in love with life together. Fall in love. Fall thank in you. Love. Our next poet, thank you. Our next poet is going to be um, uh, Janice uh, Rees. Okay. Uh, okay. Tina Derricks, would you? Come on. Let's let's give a Tina a great round of applause. All right, Tina. All right. Got me sweating over here, like no. <laughs> this is an oldie but a goodie. Ow! You remember this one? <laughs> I put a little twist on it this time. It's called "Who Are You?" Who are you, Jesse? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this four years ago and I read it at the last, the first and last slam. You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> I find it hard to believe that innocence once lived within the madness of those cold brown eyes. And even to your surprise as you raise your fists in desperation, trying to be that man you want the rest of us to see. And you don't give to her that which you gave so freely as a child because through those eyes her love is not the same even though she tries in vain to understand you in your pain. Wanting so desperately to believe in that innocence, she waits for you to change. But instead you lay in wait while she falls victim to your fate. You wine and dine on her thin dime, her sacrifice, your peace of mind. With delusions of grandeur, entitlement, and greed, you steal what little love is left inside her and rob her till she bleeds. And is it just me? Or is it time that allows me the gift of that which you don't see? That to love another you must first love within yourself all that others oftentimes don't see. And so I see that you are not the man that stands out beyond the rest cause even at your best you cannot be. So you pretend. You steal the worth of worthy men, faking your way through thick and thin, a bitter soul that's been worn thin. So who do you think you're trying to fool with all that foolish pride as you drop that so-called knowledge and waste my precious time? Cause I ain't the one, not like she. And a replica is all I see of a broken man with broken dreams, fiending for the meaning of what he means, soul screaming yet hiding behind what lies behind those cold brown eyes. And the only one you're fooling is that fool inside with too much pride. So wake up and take a look at what we see and give back that which you take so selfishly or give it up and man, just be. Who, who are you really? Okay. Uh... Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a short medley and then I'm going to give some uh, prizes, uh, one per uh, winner. Uh, so uh, uh, name, name that tune. Uh, Billie Jean. <laughs> uh, uh, name that tune and you'll win a t-shirt. Um, I've got sunshine. I want, I want, Who 
who's a, who, who, uh, who, who wrote the song? What year did he write it? <laughs> which, which one was right? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Who did this song here? Um, um, <laughs> Betcha by golly wow, <laughs> you're the one. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Which one would you like? Okay, uh, okay the, the next song, uh, uh, who did this song here? Um, Chocolate girl, be my girl. I, I'll go to another. <laughs> okay, who did this one here? Um, Welcome back home where you belong. I'm the one that loves you. Okay, who did it? <laughs> Baby, can you stop the rain from falling? Won't you People chase my clouds away? People rising in one, one per winter. Uh, one, uh, come on, man. Uh, okay. All right. Who, who, who did this one here? Um, I'm going to take about two more minutes and... Whatever, get away. Okay, who did this one here? Um, um, soft and warm, a quiet storm. You got it. Oh, hey, Smokey, you got it. it. You know, well, Smokey, Smokey is Smokey. All you got to say is, which one? Was okay, you got it there, Walter. All right. Well, with, with that, all you got to do is say Smokey. You ain't got to say his last name. Uh, okay, the next one. Um, um, Closer I get to you, the more you make me see by giving me all you got. Now, okay now, uh, I'm going to uh, go way back on you now. Um, uh, I'm going to get you now. Um, you'll never find. <laughs> you got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Okay. One more. Uh, I'm gonna get all of y'all now. Um, um, I'm your magic man. Won't you let my magic hand just touch your heart and make your love appear? I know y'all ain't gonna get that one. That was Robert Winters and Fall. Okay, who did this one? Girl, how was I to know when I first met you? You got it. Okay, we're going to continue with the poetry. Pro uh, <clears throat> no, he did a... Uh, well, don't you tell me, where does it hurt, baby? You will see the need of love I feel. That's Walter Jackson. Oh, Walter, uh, uh, now nah, he may have did a remake, but the originals. Okay, uh, that's how you stay 
You know, don't you remember when daddy used to sing that to you? I'll tell you what. Okay, William. Scooby Dooby Doo, strangers in the night, chasing glances, lovers at first sight. You got it. Precious and William, y'all all stars. Everybody's all star. Okay, everybody. Okay. Huh? Sam Cook. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Darcel, Darcel, want to do another one? Well, uh, when Darcel, okay, well. I'll do another one, then I'm going to do it. Uh, everybody else is going to do another one. Uh, here's another one that I wrote. Um, um, this one is a. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Sen okay, well, I'm the, I'm the daddy. Since I'm the daddy, I'll close it out. I'm the daddy. Anybody? Any? Any? Uh, uh, I'm playing there. Who the daddy? <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, again, I would like to, uh, a heartfelt thank you to all of you for um, making this uh, program possible. And um, I really appreciate it. Like, it's not about me, it's about us. You know, when I first started this program, the first 17 years, I pretty much financed and funded out of my own pocket. And uh, I would like to take this time to thank those who sponsored and contributed with the refreshments. I'd like to thank my uh, mother Maxine there and the Father Reverend Ware. And I would like to thank um, some of the business people and my friends, uh, 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 Brother Pete at the uh, uh, barbershop, uh, Brother Langston, uh, contractor here in the community, um, and every business who participated and some of my friends, uh, Ed uh, and Amos who, uh, uh, help me out there and help us get this program going uh, this year. And I, let's give uh, uh, Eric, our cameraman, and his staff for a great uh, job, great show. And um, I would like to thank you all for your participation. And we have food and refreshments out there. So once again, uh, next year is going to be 31. So let's give a great round of applause there. And I uh, come here, Francis. And my princess. Until, till next year. What do we say? Oh, I'll close it out with a song. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must say. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Till then, my darling, each memory. Till then. Good night and thank you. <laughs> all right. And uh, all the poets. All, uh, oh, may I have your attention? Every poet, please write your full name so that uh, we can have it on the screen and you'll get a copy of the entire presentation. Oh, okay. William, okay. R-E-A-V-E-S? Oh, okay. I'll